In this video, I want to explain the correction for attenuation as provided by classical test theory. Here you can see the formula for the correction for attenuation. And so what does this formula do? This formula allows us to estimate the correlation between true score variables based on the observed variable correlation and the reliabilities of these observed variables. The idea being that whenever we measure something in the social sciences, we typically have measurement error or unreliability involved. So when we have, for example, test score variables, Y1 and Y2, then those contain measurement error. Now, measurement error has an effect on correlation coefficients, namely it adds noise to our data. And so it leads to underestimates of correlations, or in other words, it waters down the correlations that we see in our data. The true correlations are higher and our observed variable correlations underestimate the true correlations because of that noise that is provided by random measurement error. And so our goal is to have precise estimates of correlations between social science constructs. We don't want to underestimate those relationships. And so therefore, we can apply the correction for attenuation to estimate the correlation between true scores. Or in other words, we can estimate what the correlation would look like if our measurements had perfect reliability. So if we were able to measure the constructs with perfect reliability, then what correlation should we get? Or we can sort of say correct for measurement error and um, estimate the correlation that is the true correlation. That's what this formula does. Is So here in the, um, uh, in the numerator of the fraction, you have the observed correlation that you can estimate or calculate based on your data, based on your observed test score variables. And then in the denominator, you have the reliability. So you first have to have an estimate of the reliability of each test score variable. And that can be provided, for example, by using a measurement model of classical test theory. You can fit a model of tau equivalence or essential tau equivalence or a congeneric model or some other measurement model. And then based on that model, you can derive a reliability estimate, for example, by using Cronbach's alpha or by using other reliability coefficients that would be appropriate given your data. And then you can calculate or estimate the correlation between true scores by dividing your observed correlation by the square root of the product of the reliabilities of those test score variables, assuming that measurement errors are uncorrelated for the different tests. This formula was first provided by Charles Spearman in 1904 to provide for this um, correction. I want to show you an example as well for how this works. So let's say we have an observed test score, co test score correlation between two tests or between two um, measurements that is um, 0.174. So that's our observed correlation. And now let's say we estimate the reliabilities for these two measurements to be 0.81 and 0.88. Then we can correct those this correlation for attenuation using Spearman's correction for attenuation formula. And then we get the correlation between true scores is equal to 0.174 divided by the square root of 0.81 times the square root of 0.88 is about 0.206. So you can see the observed correlation is slightly lower than the true score correlation that we estimate here. And that's because the measures are not perfectly reliable. The reliabilities are fairly high, fairly close to one, but they're not perfectly one. And therefore, there's some shrinkage here, so to say, in the observed correlation. Measurement error watered this correlation down. And so we would be underestimating the true correlation slightly when using our observed correlation. Obviously, that's a big problem in many studies, because in many studies, we use observed correlations to estimate relationships between constructs. And so then we have to assume that those are under estimates. Now, the only situation where your observed correlation would be equal to your true score correlation would be if you had perfect reliabilities, meaning if you had ones here in under the um, under the square root symbol. If both tests had perfect reliability of 1.0, then you would not need to make an adjustment.
adjustment, obviously, to the correlation. However, in the social sciences, typ typically measurements have reliabilities only between 0.7 and 0.9, so usually far from perfect, and therefore we have to take this into account when we look at correlation coefficients between observed variables, then we have to assume that those are typically lower than the true correlations. Now, this is a pretty tedious procedure, right? Because you have to first calculate the observed correlation, you have to come up with a reliability estimate, the reliability estimate has to be accurate, you're making assumptions when you um, estimate those reliabilities. So there's a lot of work involved in this. Fortunately, nowadays we have a more straightforward method for implementing this correction for attenuation. We don't have to calculate it by hand using all these steps, but rather what we can do is we can apply confirmatory factor analysis and then we obtain a model-based correction for attenuation through CFA. In confirmatory factor analysis, we have the measurement model combined with a structural model for the latent true score variables here. And so we can specify true score models for multiple constructs or multiple variables simultaneously with multiple indicators. And then these true score variables contain the true score variance. So they are already corrected for measurement error. And we can, in this model, also obtain the correlation between them directly in the model as a model parameter. And then we can also test it for significance because we obtain a standard error and a test statistic for that correlation. So we can see whether it's statistically significant. We don't have to calculate it by hand. We also don't have to calculate reliabilities because the reliability correction or unreliability correction is already built into the model. And also this model provides us with a test of model fit. So we can also check certain assumptions about the variables, for example, that they are unidimensional and or what kind of measurement structure is appropriate here. Are the measures tau equivalent? Are they only congeneric? We can test all these things in a confirmatory factor analysis model. We can also test whether errors of measurement are uncorrelated and so on. And so this is a much more practical and also much more general procedure for estimating latent correlations that are corrected for measurement errors. You don't have to really use this correction for attenuation formula anymore if you have access to CFA and if you have um, multiple indicators for your variables, you can run a CFA in programs such as, for example, M+. And if you're more interested in that, check out the description. I offer workshops that show how to fit these types of models in M+. I also offer workshops on psychometric methods such as classical test theory, where I discuss all these issues in greater detail. And so I hope you found this video useful for learning about the correction for attenuation and how this can be done in a modern model-based way now using confirmatory factor analysis models. Um, Subscribe to this channel, please, if you like these types of tutorials and leave a comment in the comment section in case you have any other topic that you would like to see discussed. And I'll see you next time.